FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. Now, earlier today, Missouri's Lieutenant Governor Peter Kinder released a statement saying that the will and the voice of the voters needs to be upheld. And, of course, he also filed the first suit against Obamacare. And uh, the lieutenant governor joins us on the phone now. Good afternoon, sir. Thanks for having me, Dana. Good afternoon. Why Why is there all of this waffling? Is it because that there we have folks who are afraid that uh, maybe the federal government will start playing with Medicare and Medicaid funding? Well... It isn't merely that. There, there are well-intentioned people who think that uh, after the election results, we just have to lie down and, and let the feds do anything they want to us. And I'm in the camp that says uh, there are many legal issues still out there. Uh, there, there are unresolved questions, and there's no reason to rush into the, to this Obamacare health care exchange. And I'm drawing on the wisdom, Dana, of a of a libertarian conservative legal scholar at the Cato Institute who's done the path-breaking work on this, who's become a friend of mine, named Michael Cannon. Mm-hmm. Michael Cannon wrote an article that I have referenced and I have tweeted on this subject. Last week it was published on NRO, National Review Online, mm-hmm. in which he admonished states that, that they should not sign on to these exchanges. And I'm drawing on his wisdom and his scholarship to say, that Missouri should not go down this road. Now, the, you know, you say, you say, what is motivating some Republican lawmakers to say we should? I think there's an air of resignation mm-hmm. uh, about last week's election results. But I, I'm here to say on your air to you and your listeners, I've just begun to fight. And I'm going to make you a prediction, Dana, that I just made to another uh, news source on a taped interview. Uh, this is the first time I've said this on anybody's live air. You watch over the next one to four years, this whole rotten edifice of Obamacare is going to come crashing down. It is not sustainable. It is not affordable. It is not workable. There are legal issues out there that are going to undermine it, notwithstanding the election results of last week. They have missed their own deadlines over the last year and a half to implement it. I'm talking about the people in the Department of Health and Human Services charged with implementing the law, Hmm. have missed the deadlines. As you know, they've given out 2,000 waivers Mm -hmm. to politically connected labor union supporters of the administration that, that, you know, if you're friendly enough with this president and this administration, you don't have to follow the law. Well, then why do we have this law? I mean, the fact that they gave out so many waivers was one of your first, uh, what a poker player would call a tell, Right. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that what we're dealing with here is completely and totally unworkable. And, and, and there is a legal issue out there that most folks might not be aware of uh, that has been put before the federal courts by the Attorney General of Oklahoma. And it is simply this. The, if he wins that case... Uh, the whole edifice of Obamacare health care exchanges could come crashing down because apparently the way they wrote the law, Obamacare, mm-hmm. it's only the state-level exchanges that can do the tax exemption for employers who who want to qualify. Uh, if If the feds come in, and this is their threat, well, Missouri, if you don't do this, and the other states, if you don't set up your own exchange, the feds will come in. Right. Uh, I'm ready to call that bluff because I don't think they can. And even if they do, they don't have the power to grant the tax favored status to employers. And I'm telling you, this is the linchpin that could pull apart all of Obamacare. Very much so. And I what do what do individuals need to do at this point? Just keep the pressure on the state State lawmakers. State senators are convening tonight tomorrow and Saturday morning for their annual retreat. I'm talking about the majority caucus, the mm-hmm. Republicans, right. in St. Louis. If you, can, if you have any of their uh, phone numbers or emails, give them a call. Tell them you don't want any part of this exchange. Uh, reference the Michael Cannon article on National Review Online, which very succinctly in about two pages lays out the whole case that I don't have time to make here before you right. with us today. But I spoke with Michael today. Michael was in St. Louis speaking at a conference this morning. I just, by coincidence, mm-hmm. and and he uh, 
was speaking at a Missouri Chamber of Commerce trying to buck people up. Now, one of the senators he told me was there was Scott Roop from St. Charles, very much in your listening area. Yes. And Scott is a good conservative, and he is going to be leading the health care discussion for the majority Senate caucus on Saturday morning. And I believe he's solid with us on this, so praise for Senator Scott Roop and for the other conservatives who are determined that we will not set up an Obamacare health care exchange in Missouri. Absolutely, because that's, I mean, we've had, I, I don't know how m- much clearer Missourians can be at this point. We've had Prop C, we've had Prop E. Uh, the, the, state legis- the state lawmakers are barred from implementing anything like this at this point because that, I mean, it's illegal at this point. We believe it, it to be a violation of the Health Care Freedom Act that Missourians, that we passed, we lit the prairie fire of opposition across this country at the August 2010 primary by passing the Health Care Freedom Act by 71 percent, passing all 114 counties. How much clearer can you get? Right. Do you think at some point, because of the Republican majority, that that Jay Nixon would ever be pressured upon to to make a to to ask for a waiver for the state? That's a good question. One that I hadn't thought of. Uh, Jay, Jay, I don't know. That would be stepping out and taking a position, and Jay Nixon wants to hide in the tall grass. Well, he's got a presidential campaign he's got to plan. Uh, <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah, that would be uh, because – I mean, that's because people who voted for Jay Nixon had to vote for Prop E and Prop C because it passed by that much of a a huge landslide margin. Correct. So he would be just simply doing what Missouri, his Missouri constituents would want. Well, Uh, Jay Nixon has a wet finger in the air uh, based on his polling. And you saw him come out this year before the election, several months before he was actually critical of Obamacare. What does that tell you? It tells you that he's, his own soundings shows how overwhelmingly unpopular this law is in Missouri, as do our election results of nine days ago. Right. And uh, there, there is no reason to go down this road, just as there is no reason for Missouri to go down the road of the Medicaid expansion. Right. In our state. Well, uh, what about the the idea of nullification? That's something that a lot of conservatives have discussed. And I know the Supreme Court uh, hasn't been too uh, keen on the idea. What say you of that as, a, as an option as well? Uh, Dana, nullification was a, uh, a major battle in this country 150 to 180 years ago mm-hmm. with guys like Henry Clay, and mm-hmm. who was the guy from South Carolina – name escapes me, way back in the 1820s and 30s, the first one who asserted nullification. Uh, and the the president at the time, I believe, in the 1830s was Andrew Jackson, yes. and he said, I will send in the uh, the army and, and uh, hang people he was so before friendly. we go down this road to nullification. I, I, didn't, I think it's a detour and a snare and delusion, okay. and, and I don't think it's real. Well, that's a good. I, well, I'm, I like I like it all out in those terms because that's something a lot of people have discussed, and you know, people brought it up on Twitter and so on and so forth. But uh, but no, the Michael Cannon piece on National Review Online, and I, you know, I think it would probably be interesting to see what would happen if we were to put some pressure on Jay Nixon too for a waiver. I mean, all options. There's a lot of options before us at this point. Great, absolutely, I'm with you. And it's an honor to be back on your air. Of course, peterkinder.com, the website for Missouri's lieutenant governor. Thank you very much, sir. And Thank you, Dana. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Take Bye-bye. care.